and stable in 2023. Great news, though. It is. It is great news. It's just a little over 50%, obviously, of the, the snapshot of Canadians that was uh, interviewed. 38% are not confident in their financial situation. And uh, this, uh, this does come especially from non-homeowners, or you could say tenants, and lower-income households. For a lot of Canadians that are feeling a little bit of that security, and if they've lived in their home for several years, uh, that nest egg has grown just from within their home. The values of their homes have gone up that much. Yeah, absolutely, Gita. But, you know, um, for 10 years, Canadians um, have enjoyed the benefit of the lowest rates ever. Um, that is what caused the price everything as a domino effect. Now it is stabilizing. It went up very high, very fast, um, just to bring the market back to its normalcy. So, you know, when the people who have not owned home before and they were planning last year and now they're looking at the rates, it's it's it is what they look at it, what they talk about it, they read about it. It is it looks very challenging. But in the coming times, I am pretty confident that you know um, you have to look at things more realistically. What works best for you, and I'm sure that they can one day sooner than later afford a home. Yeah, and it, you know the in that thirty eight percent, Rajiv, like you're saying, there's a significant percentage that um, are not there's a percentage that wanted to. So over the last few years, they just chose not to jump on the bandwagon. A lot of them were uh, uh, waiting for prices to drop. And so we have conversations with a lot of people that uh, wanted to get into home ownership, but didn't because they were waiting. And it wasn't at the time because they couldn't afford it. That being said, uh, we do have to be very cognizant of the fact that there is a part of that percentage that truly is in um, a lower income household and simply even before or now it's even harder we're not able to make that cut so there are very real challenges and this is not to sugarcoat everything because we're we're well aware um, and, and have to be cognizant of that fact and 45 percent of Canadians are concerned that further interest rate hikes will impact their ability to buy or sell a home in 2023. Yeah. Yeah, just to summarize this, I would just add one thing is that um, in in the last couple of years when there were bidding wars happening, there were 10, 15, 20, 30 offers at times of, uh, we have seen up to 45 offers on a particular property. Yep. That is so much of um, emotional draining for people who are looking to buy because they don't know what they are buying. They're just willing to up the price, up the price, up the price, just to have an ownership of a particular property or a property in a particular neighborhood. So, and they're willing to increase the price without even giving a thought. So for those people, who have gone through those emotional roller coaster by holding up and not to get into that competition this is the time is which is going to be you know much better for them in the next 12 months is to see how they can easily buy with without any pressure the interest rate may be high but the price prices going down has also just balanced them out it's just important thing is to understand their outlook yeah so what is the outlook for 2023? Here's, here's where the shortage is at. Um, we, this is what we know for a fact. 1.5 million homes are needed by 2031. Obviously, that's because the demand continues to be high. And of those 1.5 million, 48% are needed just for the GTA. Oh, I think we missed Durham in here. Yeah. But Toronto, Peel, York, and Durham regions. Now, if we are looking at, we're looking at 58,102 homes in terms of the deficit, uh, because that's the number of homes that is currently being, uh, being built. To meet the supply, so we basically need to build 490 homes a day for nine years. One condo tower is 400 units. We would be missing, based on that, 200 towers a year. And the idea of sharing this is not to paint a dismal picture. In fact, it's the opposite. It's to say, at least for homeowners who are currently a lot more worried than the buyers are, 
They're worried about the value of their home, but keep in mind that demand is very much ex exists. Demand is there. And even with all of the government policies coming into play, we are still not going to be able to meet the complete demand. Uh, so from a homeowner's perspective, um, you know, you should you should know that values are not going to be plummeting down anywhere. Uh, and from a buyer's perspective as well, um, you know that because of the changes in the interest rates, because of, uh, you know, the, the psychology of the market right now, there is a window of opportunity because there is more option. There are more options in terms of listings available to choose from and the softening of the prices or the stabilization makes it easier for you, like Rajiv was saying, where the 30, 45 offers, well, now you have the opportunity to negotiate. Absolutely. And just remember one thing, everybody, is that this deficit is not about foreign investors. You know, this is the supply for people in Canada living and coming into Canada on a proper approved document. So that is where this deficit is all for that. Yeah, because a lot of, um, well, you, we know that that new rule is coming into play as of yeah. January 1st, no foreign buyers for two years. Um, but, you know, while some people might feel encouraged with that, it, it's also just to point out that the foreign buying over the last year or two, it was it was insignificant. So two to three percent of all the homes that were buying were being sold you know, attributed to foreign buyers. So even though that might seem a little um, exciting for buyers to hear that, oh, we won't be competing with foreign buyers. Um, honestly, it's it's just another little tool that the government does use. Um, and it might have some impact, but more so psychological for the local buyers. It's basically a fog, just to confuse. So this is a good news where we need, why we need those many homes is not only because to feed the, the population living in Canada, but also feed the population which is coming into Canada because home or, or um, industry of construction, home and everything, there's a dominant effect because that is one of the biggest economy breeder for Canada. We need people in different sectors, so the economy grows. That is where all these people, as you see, the projection of the government and, and all the stats put together, we have a lot of, not only in GTA, this is all over Canada, which will be all uh, divided uh, proportionately. Well, that being said, Rajiv, like it is the large bulk of people mm -hmm. are coming into Ontario. Yeah. Right. So that's the, the blue line here. So it is very big. Yeah, and it is. It is. So, um, yeah, based on the size, based on infrastructure, um, you know, that's where you're going to see the majority of people coming in. Gita, just to your point, as we have already seen how Durham is expanding exponentially, uh, Peel is expanding, mm -hmm. York region is expanding. So you can already see these GTA are becoming bigger and bigger. Uh, in expansion because there's a lot of development happening of different industries. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and this number here, so this chart here was, let me just move this up a little bit. Uh, hold on. I want to move this bar up so I can actually see this. Oops. Let me help you here. No. Yeah, second. And there it is. Yeah, so this, what is this showing? I can't see the, uh, I'm trying to move us around. This particular chart, so it shows 1.4%. I mean, basically we're looking at a lot, um, the number of immigrants coming in, a lot higher in Canada as compared to the United States, United Kingdom, Germany, and in fact, it's negative for, Italy and Japan. Um, historical real estate values. Uh, basically, just a quick look at this slide to talk about, you know, if you take yourself back to 2008, 
Um, and it was the same kind of um, feeling at the time because there was a financial crisis then. Canada was not hit as hard as the United States, but there was a period of six months where things came to a standstill, prices softened, and um, the housing market was impacted. But since that time, and if you just take it over a longer period of time, prices have gone up significantly. And so today, if we're in 2022, and you want to put yourselves out there and say 2030, and you're looking back, you're probably going to be looking at a very similar kind of uh, growth line. So expected trends in 2023 for the GTA. There are going to be continued interest rate um, increases. I I think they're talking about January being the last one, but we don't know. We don't know. But the important thing is, Gita, is that we are not trying to, to bring all the sugar-coated things to you. We, mm -hmm. we are trying to bring you what we also study and hear and, and experience ourselves in the market. So there are going to be chances of um, rate increases, but it's not going to be as aggressive as it was in the year of 2022 because they the what the government and the uh, politicians and and all these um, people were trying to work with they have brought the economy to a, a little bit slower pace so the growth starts again so the which will have a effect on a rising of the unemployment uh, because of the slowdown so new opportunities will engage as well because i've seen some people many people actually uh, they lost their jobs but they were so focus that they got to do something, they started looking at different businesses. They became business owners. So there is a lot of people who think differently. So that's one thing. And the construction projects has been delayed just because of that as well, because of the higher interest rates. Um, well, there's that. a widening in the gap between market prices and construction costs. So what is happening for a lot of people now is that there are more opportunities when they're looking at the resale market versus new construction projects, depending on what they are. And of course, new construction condos can be very different from new construction low rise. Um, but the projects are being delayed for that reason, because the developers are finding themselves in a situation where their costs are going up. And so there is that widening of a widening of the gap. Um, Gossip, that being said, supplies, everything has gone up. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And the, and for investors, so for those of you that are investors, uh, those delays are actually welcome for investors. Where it becomes a little challenging is if you're an end user and you want to get into your home. <laughs> that's not happening. <laughs> um, in terms of the overall conditions in 2023, we are going to be in what we call a uh, balanced market. So again, this is we're reporting from the Remax Canada report. Uh, the expectation is that it will be a balanced market. The average price point is estimated to be at a million sixty one thousand eight hundred and fifty three, a very healthy average price point. Um, yes, January first to October thirty first, the average price. Um, a million two oh three now and this is again that was an unrealistic market it was just a short term uh, aggressive growth and I am well, well this is know. keeping yeah and this is taking into account this is not as of today as yeah. of today we're at a million eighty nine this is taking into account January right until October yeah. so January February March really bump up that average for 2022 yeah that was the biggest player yeah and we'll see where we end the year at there's still these are numbers till the end of October yeah. um overall it we're still looking when you compare 2021 to 2022 we're still looking overall at an increase of eight to ten percent depending on and and that's pretty much um, across the board. So we these numbers here, and we can share them. If anybody is looking to get this chart, we can send it to you. These are numbers for across Western Canada, Ontario, um, and then right into Quebec. But overall, overall, we're looking at increases in year over year increases, anywhere from seven to 10, in some cases, 15%. Some price points have actually continue to go higher. But overall, we're seeing th this is an indication of how we're getting into that balanced 
market for 2023. I just want to add one thing, Gita. The slide you were showing about the uh, but the percentage growth, you know, in the first um, January, this one, you know, from January to October, uh, 1.2 million versus today, uh, close to 1.6 uh, So just want to sh share my thought is the average growth, what you also mentioned, has been historically five to eight percent. Every year, the growth has been there consistently. That is called a consistent growth. But this year, the market shot up for a few months only, which went over 15, 20, and 25 percent in some areas. So if you see that, the difference between the uh, 1,061 million. Well, yeah, that's 2023. Yeah, yeah. But we're just so, a little so higher. We are higher. Mm -hmm. So what you see is the difference is exactly what unrealistic growth happened. That mm -hmm. is the only thing is it will come back to us regular growth of five to eight percent yep. easily exactly which is why it's going to be a balanced market yeah um so again we'll not go into all of these numbers here um but happy to share this with anybody that is looking for this information as well and now what can 2023 mean for buyers you will have fewer you know less competition uh, reduced prices. So it gives you the option to actually negotiate. You don't have to be in multiple offers. Increase in the number of choices you have in the market. You might be able to now afford a bigger home in a location of your choice. Absolutely. And you can do comfortably um, home inspection. See, right. what, see what you're getting into. Exactly. What can 2023 mean for the sellers? You have the trade-up advantage. So for those of you that are, and, and knowing that townhomes, semis, so the smaller homes are performing um, very well, and that price drop has not been as significant as it has been for the larger detached homes, you now have the advantage of trading up to a larger home where the gap has reduced in terms of average price point. I would add one more thing, Gita, is that it's not only trade up. If you have lived in a bigger home for a long period of time, and you don't need that big size of home to just overhead cost of utilities and taxes and all. And this would be time also to downsize so that you can have more liquid cash available for mm -hmm. your own other investments you want to do or you want to do something different. So, you know, you can sell a 5,000 square feet home and move down to a 2,000 square feet home. Yep. That and also, it can help you as well. It, 100%. And also because the drop has not been so significant um, that, you know, you're you're now taking out of your own equity. No, your equity is still strong in there. If you've lived in your home, this is not obviously, folks, for, for people that have lived in their home for a year, a year and a half. Um, but if you've lived in your home for three, five, 10 years or more, absolutely, that downsizing option is still very attractive. And great for downsizing and putting the money to work. You can invest into your, continue to invest into your stocks and bonds and other, and real estate, resale investment. You know, you can have a couple of different ones and which can be give you residual income and have your home paid for in a smaller downsize. Property. Exactly. Now, um, reduce num competition of listings. Um, so for sellers that are holding back, um, you know, don't hold back. This is the time to get into the market because, you know, the good listings priced and presented properly are going to sell. You have a stronger ability to relocate to the suburbs and have all the advantages that the buyers do too, especially if you're looking to buy and sell. Yeah. Um, now, reminder, we've been doing this, these calls um, weekly for... For the last two and a half years, we started in March of 2020. Uh, we have, we're very excited. We're getting uh, all ramped up for a podcast coming in 2023. Thank you to everybody that has uh, shared their input and what they would like to hear from us. So more details on that will be coming. Um, and as I said, it's so that will be fun. Good it, fun right on this. It will. You'll find it really valuable and you will have the option of listening in instead of having to watch a video. It, it will be a video podcast too, but you're going to have the option of just listening in. So easy. And as always, Nick loves doing this slide. As always, follow us um, at Team Rajpal. Follow us on social media. And if you have any questions, give us a call or email us. 
we're available on every platform, including TikTok. Please join and uh, have a look at the lighter side of real estate. And uh, you'll see our tagline here at the bottom. You'll love coming home. Absolutely. And our mission statement always be same and will be same is that we are here to help you and educate you with the information and knowledge and guide you through so that you are able to make the right decision for yourself. We give 100% unbiased opinion and make you comfortable to make choices. That's right. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we will see you next time.